The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everybody, it's good to see you again. I hope you're staying cool and indoors when you can. Uh, Colorado has been dealing with its own kind of heat wave, but uh, I'm, I'm beginning to, to realize that with Colorado weather, first, the humidity is lower. And two, you can have several days of like 90s, maybe triple digits, that's rare. But then a storm will come in and the temperatures will drop to like the 60s or 70s. And also in the morning, it's like 60s, maybe 70s. So it's been hot, but we're weathering it. So, but anyway, today begins a whole new area of Viridian Tea House. I call it Tea and Tails. Now, what exactly am I talking about? I'm glad you asked. I love to read books, duh. And I also love to read stories out loud. I like to do, do, do the different character voices. I like to just really get into the story. There's so many talented authors out there. And yes, I do reviews, but I also wanted to read some of the stories to you so that if by chance you are thinking about buying a particular book and you're not kind of, you're not really sure if you want to buy it or not, kind of on the fence, maybe me reading it will be like, oh yeah, I think I will get it. And even if you don't want to buy it, maybe this is just a few minutes out of your day where you can get yourself a cup of tea or coffee or fruit juice or whatever, and you just enjoy an adult version of story time. So. Without further ado, let's begin the first installment of Tea and Tales. The tea today is from my own company. This is Goth Librarian Tea Blend. A little bit of backstory. This was the first blend I ever created with my company. I had no idea what I was trying to do. I just had this idea and I was like, just go for it. If you're gonna make mistakes, but go for it. Goth Librarian Tea Blend was inspired by my book, Tales from a Goth Librarian, which I'll be reading from today, and also from my time in the goth subculture, which I still am a part of it, even though I look like I came from prep school right now. <laughs> um, I was a goth kid during the 90s. I think that was the second wave of the goth subculture. And I, when I went to school in DC, I would go to all the goth clubs and dress up. And that, that also got me into Vampire the Masquerade, been true forever. And uh, I just remember that there were some people who used to smoke the club cigarettes. They would come in a red and black box. And when you lit it, you could, you could hear the crackle. I think it was like sugar water on the, uh, on the, the, the wrapper. And it always smelled like walking through a forest at fall. It was it was really cool. And then like some of the goth kids would try to dance with their clove cigarettes to make trails of the smoke as they danced. So goth librarian tea blend just it it means a lot to me. It's from my past, and uh, the ingredients are black tea, Assam tea from the Assam region of India, cloves, and allspice and a lot of love and one blend that I'm just, I'm never gonna get rid of it because I, I love it and it goes well with the book or any of my creepy and, and dark books and other creepy and dark books written by other people as well. So I will talk about where you can purchase these items after story time is over, but let's begin Tea and Tales. Today's book again, Tales from a Goth Librarian, written by me. This was published through Curlike Enterprises, now known as Dark Oak Books and Media. And I've, I've gotten a couple of passages that I wanna to read to you. The book is part short stories and really bad goth poetry. So I'm gonna read a couple of the stories and a couple of the poetry. So sit back, grab yourself some tea. I know I've got mine in my Celestial Dragon mug. And let's begin. Tales from a Goth Librarian by Kimberly Richardson. Prologue. Twas ere the sun did fall into the blackened soil, 
what we mortal men and women call earth. The branches did break, seeping into such mud that all who witnessed it used their eyes to see. And the children did play among the vines so thick and coarse that soon their sins were forgotten, lost in a fog of forgetfulness. And I, I who writes it down, a humble author, genuflect if you please, will hope that one day my words will be read as truth shall never be. I take no claim to the source of my words, but only speak. I was a witness to the play laid out before me. When nature collided with the force of our limit, soon, soon did the play begin, curtains raised and audience gasping with last breaths, scented with peppermints, old books, and dreams of a better time. The curtains lift, the candles lit, and now begins. Non compos mentes. They dance for me since I am no longer able to do so. I watch them twirling and swaying like grass in a summer wind, and I am jealous. I want to dance with them, to show them that I am still alive, still breathing, and still full of blood. Ah, but that is a dream, is it not? To dance with these gods and goddesses. Such a thought makes me smile. I keep the light burning for them all day and night, should their desire strike them without warning. I want them to know that I do understand. I used to be like them, of course. They call me by my first name, Drake, giving me a sense of family, but I know it is all lies. They only want me to keep the light burning for them. It does get hard sometimes. The fires that burn come with such a price, and yet only I make the payment. Their clothing changes color while they move, colors I have never seen before. I wish others could watch this, but I know it is impossible. You see, to watch them dance is to go insane. They feed from that insanity, drinking it down like ambrosia. They are gods after all. I keep to a little corner since that is all they offer me and sometimes not even that. I find a space where I can and I am lucky if I can before they come. They come at me with sharpness and lust for blood, but it is their dancing that finally kills. I used to dance, not anymore. Not since they in a moment of black humor tore my legs from my body with their clawed hands. They were bored at the time and has since asked for my forgiveness. I give it to them, of course, for I know they love me. It is hard to keep the fires burning for them since I use my own body fat as tallow. A pinch here, a finger there, and they dance the nights and days away while I sit in my spot and cry my tears. I hate them and I love them too much to die. Sometimes I don't notice the pain. Not at all. One of them, a woman named Frenai, sits beside me to watch the others. She never says a word to me, but I can feel her two hearts beating for me. She sits next to me because in some way she feels sorry for me, but I know better. I know they have the power to make me whole again and she does not do so. All she wants to do is just sit by my deformed side and hum her little songs of mayhem and chaos. She is the one who brings the storms. I do not know how long I have been like this, and quite honestly, I do not remember when they captured me and took me away to their own world. All I know is the here and now. Sometimes I forget that I no longer have legs. Sometimes I forget that I am blind. My beautiful, beautiful creatures of dance and song, frolicking to an endless tune that I am blessed to know. Sometimes, and, and this is the strange part, I see glimpses of men in white stabbing me with long needles, talking to me about my condition and how I only have the power to make myself better. Truly, they are demons for they want to hurt me. They tell me that I am in a place, a place, a place, named Renson. A place for people like me to get better. Eyes. I 
want these visions out of my head. But if they keep coming back stronger and stronger. I am the keeper of the light for the dancers of gods. I am beyond all fear. I watch. silk. And let me just say, for the record, there's a good friend of mine, her name is Kat, who read this book and this particular story. I'm not going to read all of it, just a part of it. She said that she threw up after reading this story. Kat, if you're watching this, I'm actually going to tag you on this video. I haven't forgotten that. <laughs> so, silk, just a fragment. <clears throat> Actually, let me take some little tea break here. Lovely. <clears throat> I love her. <laughs> Such a simple statement, but it means so much more to me. She's the air I breathe, the cool water I drink, the earth under my feet, the sun, the stars, the moon, everything. She gives me reason to get up every morning and gives me more than pleasant dreams when I fall asleep. She is my own essence, carefully wrapped into a perfect being that causes even the gods and goddesses to tremble. Every day I think of her lips kissing mine, her soft and supple body coming into contact with my own as we make love every day and night. Perhaps other men would pass out due to fatigue or stress, but not I. I would give her every bit, every drop of myself simply because she is worth that much to me. I have been working for the company for five years now when she arrived last year. When I first saw her, I could hear buzzing in my ear. She was unpacking her boxes and moving things around in her small but comfortable office. The last person to occupy it moved to California due to his wife getting a job there, while co-workers stopped by asking her if she needed any assistance. I walked by her office while carrying some mail, and when her eyes met mine, everything around me disappeared. I could no longer hear Kathy type furiously in her cubicle, nor Charles flip through his 540-page report. All I could see, all I could hear was her. She stared at me, I stared back. She waved at me, then went back to unpacking while I stood rooted to the spot until Amy, the floor's gossip queen and melodramatic bitch, bumped into me and spilled my mail. Slightly dazed, I, I reached down to grab my mail while Amy stood over me and said, damn dude, watch where you're going, okay? She always had this annoying thing about her, one that I could never place my finger on, but I knew that it was there like a tick burrowing under my skin. Mm, sorry about that, I mumbled as I picked up the mail from the floor. I, I was preoccupied. Yeah, well, whatever. She then walked around the corner and was soon gone, leaving me to still pick up my mail from the floor right in front of the goddess's office. I was embarrassed. I wanted to make a good first impression on her, and instead I looked like a clown. Add to the fact that because my hands were slick with sweat, the mail kept falling out of my hands, making me look like an even bigger idiot. Do you need help? That voice. I could feel my pants tighten in certain areas. That voice. I looked up to the source, but I already knew who it belonged to. She was dressed in a simple yet tasteful black suit with short black skirt, white blouse, black tights, and black clunky shoes. Her hair was pulled back into a ponytail while simple pearl earrings dangled from her ears. Her face was inches from my own and it took all the inner strength I had to hold myself back from ripping off her clothes and ravaging her supple body. Instead, I smiled. No, but thank you anyway. Um, my hands are still slick from that Think, damn it, adhesive I used earlier. Hard stuff to get off my hands. Okay, good job, keep, keep going. Even with soap and water. I kept my smile on my face while she bent down and helped me with my mail. When my hands touched hers, I could feel a slight electric charge causing me to raise my eyebrows in surprise. 
When she handed the last of the mail to me, we both stood up at the same time, causing us to laugh. Thanks again for helping me, I said in a voice that sounded slightly nervous. Oh yeah, welcome to the company. Thank you. Um, I'm Emily. Emily Shaw. She held out her hand to me, which I took gratefully. I did not wash that hand for a week. Even when I went to the bathroom, ate food, picked my nose, or even jerked myself off. She walked back into her office, and I walked on toward my own office, drowning slowly in something warm and pleasant, something that only she created. I could barely walk. The first night after meeting her was a sleepless night. I went to bed at my usual time, but my eyes would not close. I kept thinking of her, her smiling face, her breath that reminded me of warm cookies freshly baked. I wondered what her skin tasted like. Would it be light like cotton candy or spicy like peppers? Would she melt in my mouth as I kissed her lips? Would she melt in mine? I could feel myself pressing against my boxer shorts, but I resisted. I would not debase her simply for the sake of expending my own bodily fluids, at least not yet. I closed my eyes and saw her floating above me under a clear blue sky, naked, while three red ribbons fell from her sex, thick and slimy from her own wetness. I'm not gonna read anymore. I'm gonna leave it up to you. <laughs> Cat, I really didn't read all of that. <laughs> okay, so now let's get to the poetry section. Have another sip of tea. Hmm. So good. All right, so this first poem is called A Night with Edgar. Little side note, I used to always like performing this one whenever I would do conventions. I'm not gonna perform it, but my voice might change, just letting you know. <laughs> one night as rain poured from the sky. Okay, I am acting. <laughs> <laughs> One night, as rain poured from the sky, I sat with my friend Edgar, drinking tea and eating pie. Our conversation was lengthy, but our eyes were bleak. I dared not fear him, my tongue was not meek. I asked him of his poetry, his rhyme and reason, and why people loved him during winter. Such a bleak season. It is because I'm sad and lonely, he said with a sigh. I fail at smiling no matter how hard I try. My verses come out like a bunch of dead roses, and I write my characters like corpses and poses. Perhaps you can help me, he said with desire, to rid my soul of this deplorable mire. I told him I would help to reach success evermore. Perhaps I would ask my friend, a woman named Lenore. Through the night, my knowledge of him raised me to a maven, and not once was I disturbed by his arrogant raven. Soon, the night gave way to the day, and still we converse with no servants in the way. When the time read a quarter to three, he whispered in fatigue, I must flee, for soon all you've told me will leave my mind, so I must write it down and leave nothing behind. He thanked me and kissed my hand like a gentleman and was soon out the door to formulate a plan. Now I was alone in my large home, wishing him success to no longer be alone. But soon I felt a sensation that seemed to attack. With dread I turned round, that damned raven was back. He stared at me with cold and baleful eyes and right then and there I knew it was I whom he despised. I raised my hand to my forehead in anguish and fell to the floor. But the last word I heard was, Nevermore. The next one called, Tighter, My Darling. The pain is too hard to think or dwell. I feel like I have landed in hell, but not a bad place to be. For this torture is done by myself to create the image that I am a slender elf. 
Thank the gods I do this only once a week, or else my future would truly be bleak. But I am a slave to fashion and gothic at best. Perhaps I need to increase the tightness on my corset. <sighs> too hard to <laughs> And the last one is called Black and Red. And this was inspired by clove cigarettes. <clears throat> My pretties, black and red, such a beauty to smoke in bed, for I take pleasure and delight while holding a clove cigarette to a match light. The smoke reminds me of a chilly October night, dressed in black, giving the normals a fright. The paper crackles and tastes of sweet candies, and men who smoke them turn into wild dandies. Now, with all this praise of them, you think that they were good and should be a replacement for food. But brothers and sisters of the night, this cannot be, for it's not cool coughing blood at a quarter to three. But I do not mind about the spilled blood that comes out of my mouth like a red flood. For I am of shadows and everything bleak. But I think I will quit next week. Let me see. Oh yeah, I'll do one more. Last one, this one is called Demons and Tea. <clears throat> one more, speaking of which. Mm. I hope you guys are enjoying Tea and Tales, and if you are interested in me reading your uh, your book as part of the Tea and Tales Viridian Tea House whatever, please send me a message. You can either DM me on Instagram or Facebook, or you can send me an email to teagoddess74 at gmail.com. All right, demons and tea. She comes to me like a dark beauty, but I feel I must do my duty or else I will be dead. This woman who now stands before me, holding her mug of tea, asks me to join her for warm blueberry scones. We sit at her black table and keep in mind I must still be able to do this dirty deed. She asks me if I would like jam, and I tell her, no, madame, because I am on a diet. Please understand. I look around her house, now feeling timid like a church mouse, as I watch her pour a cup of tea for me. Suddenly, I jump from my seat and scream, this time I must complete the job I came here to do. She looks at me in surprise, and widening her violet-colored eyes, she asks me what she has done wrong. I say to her, you are pure evil since the period of medieval, and I am here to slay you, you demon from hell. She calmly sips her dark oolong tea, then begins to laugh at me and says, <laughs> you have the wrong place, my dear. Oh, yes, I am a demon, don't get me wrong, but the one you want is named Zerfrong, and he lives down the street at number 13. Dear reader, I must confess to thee that I felt slightly out of key as I whisper the words, oh, demon. She bats her violet eyes while smiling with long fangs, while brushing out her eyes, her black bangs, and asks me, now, dear, more tea before you run. I must confess, dear reader, I did stay for a while. I began to like her and her toothy smile. And where else can I get such lovely scones? So the demon named Zerfong that I want to kill is right down the dark lighted hill. But for now, my present company is more important to me. You've just heard segments from Tales from a Goth Librarian by Kimberly Richardson, that's me. And also the tea for today, Goth Librarian Tea from Viridian Tea Company.
Thank you again for joining me for this first installment of Tea and Tales. And don't worry, I have more books lined up. I think I've got like four or five authors so far that, that are interested in this. So there's going to be more of this. But until next week, take care of yourself and each other. Read lots of books, drink lots of tea, and I'll see you soon. Oh, oh, forgot. You... <laughs> Okay, let's just, okay, you can get Goth Librarian Tea and also copies of Tales from a Goth Librarian in my Etsy store, which is Viridian Tea Company, no spaces. You can also get the, just the book on Amazon, but if you want to get the book and the tea as kind of a package deal, you can go to my Etsy store, Viridian Tea Company. If you have any questions, please send me a direct message or email me teagoddess74 at gmail.com. Now, let's end it again. <laughs> Take care of yourself and each other. Read lots of books, drink lots of tea, and I will see you next week. Bye for now.